Mushoku Tensei, Episode 15. Rudy's Jungle Adventure continues, this time with a focus on Eris. But what did the anime skip out? So go ahead and smash that like for Best Girl Roxy, wonder where she's at. One Mushoku video has been removed, but more about that later. First off, here's some info about where they were staying. It was actually Gustav's house, which was the largest in the village, really getting that royal treatment. For the girls they rescued, Rudy did rescue Guys' middle daughter, Minitona. The extra bit here was his older daughter studying in a different country. The little doggy girl on the other hand was from the Aldodia tribe, and Rudy did not miss a beat noticing things about her. As the girls were thanking them, they actually brought up a certain noble family again. That there was a sick, twisted noble family in Asura that is known to have a certain king for beast folk. Some fun here was Eris being oh so oblivious. She claimed that some of these nobles were some of the worst people in the world. Talk about Glass House. You then saw Rudy thinking a little bit more about this. That Eris' household did have a bunch of animal girl maids. Who knows where they could have come from. Some things you may just better be off not knowing. Anyway, getting into their three month vacation here. Besides the chunks the anime skipped, just know that the anime moved things around quite a bit. But for the first thing skipped, the anime actually didn't show Rudy saving this kid. Naturally, you have a bunch of rain, and the little kid just got swept away in the water. A fun tidbit I'll just mention for later is that most of the higher end spells really have to do with controlling the weather or environment in some way. Anyway, for a Rudy moment skipped, Rudy actually was taking advantage of potentially seeing up above. He was hoping he could see some goods from down under from a girl passing by. Next up, getting to an anime change. First off, Gullis. They actually decided to keep this guy around in the anime despite cutting so much. Originally, this guy was just shipped off to the port officials. But who cares about him? For geese, why did the anime just toss him in jail? Come on. So yes, the anime really screwed this guy over, literally. Originally, the village was actually pretty happy that he helped. He was actually rewarded for contributing to the village. As for some world building about the Dodia magic, you've seen Rudy get a first hand experience, his brain trembling. This is their secret sauce. It does allow their people to find enemies from afar with that far reaching howl, and then it makes the opponent lose their sense of balance. Rudy getting paralyzed was one of this special type of voice magic, magic that manipulated sound. Further not shown in the anime was Rudy actually trying to learn it. And these guys were really kind and trying to teach him. But unfortunately, Rudy just couldn't demonstrate it. You would imagine it would have something to do with the vocals you're born with. Sorry, Rudy, better learn how to transform first. Do that diddle move. As for some more Rudy praise skipped. Once again, you had yet another person very at awe at Rudy's chantless magic. To which Rudy really just gave the credit over to Roxy. Let's go ahead and praise her. I think they've pretty much been skipping it since they got to the demon continent. And this is not limited to the chantless magic. He always goes ahead and mentions Roxy's name. So not only is the legend of Dead End getting popular, a certain other water magician is getting quite popular. Next anime skip, Rudy saving another kid. This time, not saving them from water, but this chameleon animal beast that took one of the children. Rudy went ahead and blasted it with a stone cannon and Sayo Nara. For some info about the monsters attacking, at this point in time you did have warriors guarding the village, but unfortunately their voices and noses were really hampered by the rain, which means every now and then monsters did slip by and into the village. But back to Rudy, the village hero. After having so many saves, he was actually getting really popular among the children, really getting that hero status. No kids, stay away from Rudy. On the flip side, for Eris getting some Rudy level of excitement. In the anime, you did see her being ultra happy, ultra huggy when being around these adorable children. What the anime didn't show was Eris actually breathing pretty hard as she was actually petting their heads and touching their tails. Recall her family being super fans of beast people. Switching over to Rudyard. Since these guys were stuck in place, Rudyard actually helped guard the village, but he was actually against it at first. He talked about their warrior pride, that protecting their village was their duty. Rudyard, on the other hand, was an outsider, so really not his business. On the other hand, the village was more than happy to accept their help. I mean, they were already low on numbers anyway. Which actually led to Rudyard and Rudy making quite the pocket change. Over the few months there, they actually spent a good amount of time killing monsters, then retrieving their bodies and selling the material over to the village people. So really a win-win for both of them. 
Although let's not forget about the superd in the room, or should I say the village. So yes, at first these village people weren't really too opening towards him. But then they saw Richard just being a badass, killing the monsters left and right. At the end, the village experienced no casualties, so they were really happy with him. As for Eris this episode, he actually saw her teaching the two girls the human tongue. Rudy actually noticed that this was the first time Eris actually had friends that were her own age. Not to mention getting along with other girls. Getting into another sensitive topic, Ghislaine, here's an anime change. First off, how the topic of her got brought up. Originally, it was Eris explicitly asking them about her. It turns out this ring was actually something that Ghislaine's mother gave to her so she would stop going berserk. Not that it actually did any good. In the anime, you then hear about Ghislaine abandoning the position to guard the village and also protect their sacred fluff. So this is actually info being moved way up and revealed in the anime, which I actually do not mind. Anyway, all of this eventually got to the Eris outburst. This really just goes to show the difference in the time. First off, an attention to detail I loved was Eris at this point wearing their clothing. Compare this to the light novel where Eris is wearing her normal clothing, since it did take place right after the smuggler incident. For something else the anime skipped out, Rudy did actually ask them to apologize to Eris, which they actually did a blind to. For some new anime stuff, you did have the animal girls asking about Ghislaine, which actually added to this development moment for Eris. On top of this, this was shown throughout the episode, but the anime actually did add more to the little girls, them interested to learn the sword from Eris. Sticking with Eris, a little bit later you did hear her speaking the beast language, which makes total sense she would pick up at least a few words. This was mentioned quickly in the last day in the line novel. Switching over to Rudy, working on the rigid figure. Originally, two months into their stay, he was just starting it. But he might be wondering, why not Eris or why not Roxy V2? Like Roxy in a kimono or something? Ultimately, this goes back to Rudy's long-term plan. That the super were still this embodiment of fear towards these people. On top of this, the figure didn't have the green hair. So perhaps, just maybe, if this figure was impressive enough, people could become slowly more accepting of him. Next anime skipped that jail girl, so she was still feeling bad about how she treated Rudy in the jail, and overall just being awkward. For something the anime just brushed past, the lady thought he was getting excited over the big fluff. But it wasn't Fido Rudy was interested in, and that bit at the end was just kind of yikes. Which she had Rudy just outright say it out loud a little bit later. He was interested in her. Next up, getting into some world building info about the sacred beast. That this oversized Fido was his magical beast born every few hundred years. It actually didn't have a proper name. That this beast only appeared when the world faced a crisis. Then when it was full grown, it would go alongside the hero and use its great power to save the world. The anime did mention that hero part, but it then skipped out the lady translating and clarifying the doggy talk. That the sacred beast said that Rudy was not the one. Of course, figures. For some other fun info about the doggy here, it turns out this big fella actually arranged for food for Rudy when he was in jail. That it was the dog's way of showing gratitude towards him for saving him. And then he actually had Rudy trying to teach the doggy some tricks. Which, no surprise, they weren't too happy. Might as well just throw more water at him. For Rudy being a little bit too happy looking at the girls playing in the water, here you do have an anime change. The way this was worded in the light novel suggested Rudy was inside this room that had that wooden box. So he had Rudy hiding inside the box, in the room, just waiting for them to come and change. Now for the anime, they really just made Rudy go the extra mile. Next up, time for some drinks. The anime actually skipped out Richard and the Beast Village dude drinking a bit. They just went ahead and had drinks, talking about their past stories. Here's some world building info about the Beast Folk. That this Beast Folk was this generic term for the tribes that lived within the Great Forest. Each of the tribes here also has one of their five senses enhanced. There were some that actually originated here that crossed over to the demon continent, which then became known as demons. One distinct part for them is that one of their body parts retains this animal-like appearance. Rudy actually thought back to Horse Boy or the Pig that they should be considered beast folk too, perhaps just mutated and changed over centuries. For the Dodia tribe, they were actually considered special. They were the tribe that maintained peace inside the forest protecting the sacred beast. You then got a little bit more information about other tribes, like Dead Dodia, which is the cat tribe, or the Odd Dodia, which is the dog tribe. Both of these were the two main families, and then these divided into dozens of branch families. In other words, you got the sense of royalty and hierarchy within the Great Forest. But wait, there's more. You got hobbits and elves too, just living in a different part of the Great Forest. But let's not forget about the dwarves. These guys actually didn't live in the Great Forest, but further south, near the Blue Mountains. Then for Richard, bringing up Rudy after having some medicine in his system. Once again, he hammered down how Rudy was responsible for letting his guard down, that he knew the risk and still got caught. He just let his guard down. 
that if Rudy was actually serious from the beginning, he should have been able to take this guy out. If you think about it, he isn't wrong. Then, for something the anime completely skipped out. Somewhere throughout this, they did mention that Rudy still hadn't sent a letter. Rudy actually does have a good reason, that if the guy sent one from the demon continent, he would have no idea whether it would actually make it to Millis. You should also know that back when Rudy was contacting Roxy, the light novel did mention Rudy having to send multiple letters just in case a few got lost. Not to mention, it takes an extreme amount of time. I'm so thankful for freaking line. Anyway, as for Eris getting into, let's say a cat fight, the enemy changes up a bit. Originally, Eris went ahead and beat her silly without getting stopped, compared to the anime where that kitty got rescued. You did hear about Eris holding back, which is actually growth for her. That in the past, Eris would have never shown someone mercy. Rudy was confident in that. And here's some extra info before the fight, Tona talking crap. She was actually trying to hit Eris where it hurt. She was putting down Ghislaine and Rudy. Eris was annoyed at this, but she actually endured it calmly. Ultimately, the first one to throw the punch was her, the cat girl. For something the anime skipped, you did see the girls coming in to talk to Eris. Originally, you did have the girls coming in to thank Rudy first at nighttime. That if Rudy hadn't healed them, they might have been dead. Which then led into this quick discussion about the human mating season. Thankfully, this was definitely not needed. Then, for Eris and the girls' night. Just to confirm, the girls did spend the entire night talking. And that both of the girls were still far from actually being fluent in the human tongue. Next day, something new here. The doggy girl here making figures. I was wondering whether she picked this up from Rudy, or at least got partially inspired. I would imagine making figures is something totally done in the Great Forest. For something else new for the anime, this time involving Ghislaine. You got Ghislaine as a little kitty. So this is either a new scene or it's not shown till way later. I really like the touch of this wandering swordsman shown. But just to be clear, something similar-ish did get mentioned in the light novel. This comparison of Ghislaine to Eris. For an anime original news scene, you have Eris versus Guys, which I freaking loved. Overall, the anime did give this dude more of an arc with him and the village by extension coming to terms with Ghislaine. The anime went ahead and mixed in the Beast Girls to flesh them out as characters too. Of course, not forgetting the main takeaway of so much development for Eris showcased here. That part was true for both the anime and the light novel. And did you catch that? Something new for the anime, the Richard figures left. Aw, oh, come on, I want one now. You know what they're doing. I'm calling that coming out. As for Geese coming in last minute, he claims he escaped, but of course this guy was never locked up in the first place. You did find out that this guy was actually also one of their drinking buddies during their stay. That this guy was a smooth talker and skilled at manipulation. Although just to confirm, Ruger didn't think he was bad. On the flip side, for something skipped about why Geese was fine with Ruijard, him being a super, this goes back to his history, that as this newbie adventurer, Ruijard had actually saved him in the past, that that was 30 years ago. For some world building about that unique road they're on, this pathway did go from the Great Forest all the way to the city, that it was built a long time ago and it was bursting with mana, that even when the area was flooded, this highway would remain dry and untouched, even monsters stayed away. Then, for the mention of the seven great powers, I freaking love seeing the symbols in the anime. Here's the skipped info. That after the second great human demon war ended, that it was a technique god that came up with that title. The technique god was the one that was considered the strongest person at that time. In total, seven people were declared the strongest people in the world. Further skip with Rudy not knowing about that title. Ruger claimed the seven great powers was known during the Laplands War. After that war, half of those on that list went missing. That with the exception of the Technique God, the Seven Great Powers had all participated in the Laplands War. From them, three of them were killed, one of them went missing, and one of them got sealed away. The only one that made it out in one piece was the Dragon God. In present day, you have the Technique God that is missing, Dragon God missing, Fighting God missing, and the Demon God sealed away. Which should be Laplands, I think. Ruger further explained that even 400 years ago, people got it whether the Technique God really existed whatsoever. For another time reference skip, just know it actually took them a month to get out of the Great Forest. Not to the city yet though, although that is coming up. So definitely let me know how much did you love this episode, especially at focusing on Eris. Do you think the anime is cutting out too much world building? Or do you think they're balancing it well with the new things added? For example, the new anime original Eris fight. Unfortunately, it is always a tough balance when it comes to light novel anime, which is why I do highly recommend reading the light novel. If you are interested, it is available over at Bookwalker. Anyway, for a quick update from my end, so once again, another video taken down. I mentioned trying to do other Mushoku videos on the second channel. So for this one, I actually got a draft ready and uploaded it to the channel just to test. 
But to my surprise, I don't even know how the hell this is possible. The video was private. They not only blocked it, they actually gave me a copyright strike. I mean, come on, the video wasn't even available for anyone to see. Which is why for this video, I did use mostly Oni pictures. I do love using animation, and that's really my editing style. But unfortunately, if I do want to keep on going with this, I think I'm going to have to use, just use pictures. As a positive, it does make these videos easier to edit, so I could get them out a little bit faster. So hopefully you are fine with that going forward. Hopefully no more videos get taken down. But either way, call me stubborn or just stupid. I've been working on this video for a while on a certain Mushoku character. That's coming out this Friday, so look forward to it. I actually did figure out where this company is located. If they remove this video, I may actually go there in person and pull a Karen on their ass. For something else I do want to hammer down or just clarify, I thought this was already well known. But I keep on seeing more and more people thinking that the anime is following the manga. The Mushoku Tensei anime is adapting the light novel, not the manga and not the web novel. This episode is a perfect example. I think the manga completely skipped it. Like last episode, some of you were asking why they skipped the Eris lap pillow scene, which didn't at all happen in the light novel. I've also seen some comments mistaking me for thinking that I was covering the manga, which I haven't really read, just glanced through. I do show the manga panels as visuals if they do match the light novel. Hopefully that clears up a few things. If you do have questions, post below. I'll try to get to them. But anyway, let me know. Do you think the anime is doing a good job so far? And are you ready for the next episode? You know what's coming. Go ahead and check out the past episode's cover. There are three so far. Subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss future videos. And I'll see you guys later.